Hello, investors. It's Don Vandenborg, Senior Portfolio Manager with Revere Asset Management. Today is Friday, February 16th, 6.25 p.m. Eastern Time, late start, take two. First, first <laughs> attempt at this had audio, but no video. I can't explain it, but it is what it is, and I can't end this week until we get this video out there, so let's get to it. State of the market, we're in an uptrend since the O'Neill follow through days at the beginning of November. You can see the four green arrows over here indicating market leadership is strong and plentiful and all five of the major indexes above their short term 21 day moving average, medium term 50 day moving average and long term 200 day moving average. So what happened today? Well, earlier this week, CPI report came out showing inflation wasn't dead. We had a one day sell off and a two day recovery. Before the open today, we had PPI, which is producer price uh, index for inflation, and that indicated that producer prices showed inflation as well. Uh, this trickles through to the highly watched Fed PCE inflation uh, data, which I believe is out next week. So didn't want to see that. And producer prices, if there's inflation, normally passes over to consumers, so didn't want to see that either. Uh, we, uh, futures were up before that data came out. We sold off, recovered a bit as we opened just about flat and traded in kind of a tight range, attempted a couple of rallies during the day, but then that bout of late selling, uh, kicked in, brought us to all red on the day and red on the week for the S and P and the NASDAQ 100, while the mid caps and small caps did manage to stay positive. Uh, on the week. Here are the final numbers. Big seven down a percent. RG8, our eight growth ETF composite down 1.36. S&P 500 down a half percent, about the same for equal cap uh, weighted or equal weighted. NASDAQ 100 down nine tenths, about the same for equal weight. Dow down four tenths, mid caps down 0.9. Russell 2000 small caps down 1.4. Global 6040 stock and bond down 0.28. In-house protection down about 0.48%. Might show a little bit higher uh, if you're checking your account, but this uh, the account does not include some uh, a chunk of data that uh, uh, interest that was posted from our money market mutual funds uh, overnight. So net net down about 0.48%. Let's get to the charts. And it's, it's, since it's Friday, we want to show the weekly charts as well. So you can see what we did on the week in the upper right, while the daily chart is in the main panel. And you can see for the week down 0.42% for the S&P 500. Negative reversal today closed near the lows, but still above the eight-day exponential moving average. But a key level that needs to be watched. Uh, each of the past two weeks, let's do some drawing on here. 49.18 to 49.20 were the lows of each of the last two weeks. It's a critical level that we want it to hold. Uh, the 21 day moving average is just slightly below that. So should we break the 21 next week, this is a second level that could be tested and needs to hold. Otherwise we'll be getting uh, quite a bit more defensive. And it's very similar on the NASDAQ 100, except the level is 425. Uh, and the 21 day moving average about there. Let's go to the daily chart. NASDAQ down 1.5% on the week. Relative weakness on uh, the big cap tech names down uh, 0.9 on the day. Over to the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Uh, just down a tick uh, on the week and really three weeks tight closes here on a weekly chart. That looks like a nice consolidation. Uh, down 0.4 on the week, still above the 21-day moving average. Now mid caps. Had been weak. This week, though, strength versus the small cap index is up 0.7 on the week, despite being down almost a percent on the day. And IWM small caps. Now, IWM uh, has had something interesting happen. SMCI, which has been on what looks like now a climax run that reversed today, uh, has grown to a very large percentage of the overall Russell 2000, and it's kind of dominating uh, what goes on. It was down 20% today, and it's been responsible for over 90% of the gains or losses uh, year to date for the IWM, small cap Russell 2000, but down 1.36% on the week, but still positive by 1.2% 1. Uh, 1 positive by 1.2% on the week, 
down 1.36% on the day. Really, this just looks like a pretty decent consolidation here. Uh, but ultimately, stocks will have uh, the final say, as they always do. We don't argue with them. But that 190 level is pretty crit critical here. You can see it was undercut a couple of weeks ago. But that's been a nice breakout and support level uh, on small caps. Let's go to uh, the VIX. VIX, we got a mixed bag here. We're below 15 and below the... Um, 200 day moving average, but we're above the 21 and the 50 day moving average. So kind of a wedge being formed there. You can see the higher lows here. Uh, we don't want to violate those lows or we do want to, but if we did violate those lows, that'd be a positive for stocks, but we don't want to break out to the upside. That would probably indicate that we're testing those key levels that I mentioned on the S&P 500. Uh, onto the dollar. Uh, dollar it closed near the lows on the day uh, and uh, kind of interesting. It, diverged somewhat from what has been happening with interest rates, which we'll see in a minute. I also want to point out precious metals had a good day today, even with the dollar relatively muted. Uh, you can see silver up 2.15% on the day and up 3.4%, big candle there uh, on the week. Not sure what's going on with that, but uh, probably something to pay attention to. Uh, gold down on the week, slightly positive on the day. GDX, it's gold and silver stocks up on the day. Uh, down by four tenths on the week. Still an ugly chart, but this is a hammer. That's an attempt to put in a bottom. Uh, on to Bitcoin. Bitcoin uh, breaking out three tight closes now. You can see for the week up 9.2%. So good stuff there, holding the breakout. Now on to bonds. The broad bond index uh, breaking to the lows of uh, the recent range. Now price down means yield up. Yield up is not a good thing. Uh, there's the broad bond index. Here's TLT, the long bond. Uh, now to the rates, 0TYX. This is the long bond rate. You can see uh, after breaking out, we're near the top of that range. That's a headwind for stocks. Higher interest rates up 1.53% on the week. And the 10-year TNX uh, near the top of the range up 2.6% on the week. And we'll look at the five-year too. Uh, up 3.3% on the week. So near that breakout holding on interest rates, definitely something that we need to pay attention to. Let's go over to the tail of the tape now. Uh, I mentioned the inflation data. Uh, day count up to with a one-day consolidation, three days above the eight-day exponential moving average, 30 above the 21-day moving average. From a sector standpoint, three defensive sectors uh, positive on the day, as well as the gold and silver and gold and silver stocks. Uh, on the downside, interest rate sensitive home builders with yields up, KRE, regional banks, IYT transports, and then IGV, CLOU, and cyber. The three software uh, ETF slash sectors that we track, this is the really IGV is big cap software. CLOU is the more uh, cloud, uh, mid and small type names, and cyber is cybersecurity. So as far as the portfolio goes, Bought back Palantir near where we uh, took our profits on, on Tuesday. And Trim Data Dog is it just really has, the best trades work right away, and this one is really doing nothing since their earnings report, it sold off a little bit. Really not much of a change in the overall beta 1.1. Bottom line for the week, PPI hot, index is down on late weakness. For the week, S&P 500 and NASDAQ 100 down, mid and small caps up. Pay attention to these support levels, 49, 18 to 20 uh, on the S&P 500, 425 on the NASDAQ 100. They're right below the respective 21-day exponential moving averages, and we'll be uh, paying a lot of attention uh, to those. Let's go quickly through the portfolio. We've got both the weekly view and the daily view. Start off with the largest holding, Uber. Uh, great week up 10.6%, down on the day, down 3.6%, but on below average volume compared to the last two up days. That's what you want to see. Uh, NVIDIA next up, has, an, has earnings next week, just continues to ride the eight-day exponential moving average higher. Uh, next up is CrowdStrike. Those are really the big three and have been uh, three really nice winners during this bull run. Uh, still holding the eight-day exponential moving average about flat on the week. Uh, AMD will probably be uh, affected by NVIDIA earnings next week, although they've already reported. This 180 level is 
uh, been serious uh, resistance. It's challenged it several times over the last three weeks and has not been able uh, to get above it. So that's a key level that we're paying attention to. Uh, Data Dog, we trimmed this. Uh, sorry, not dog. D D O G. Uh, just volume has been declining. Nice numbers on earnings. Long candle sitting on the 21-day moving average, holding the 10-week moving average. Um, but we, uh, the best trades work right away. This one hasn't, so we took uh, half of it off. Still holding a starter position in it. Uh, Lily continues to make new highs and has just been acting great, up 5.7% on the week. Now the three uh, recent positions that we added, VRT, uh, down a percent on the week, uh, also has earnings next week, holding the eight-day exponential moving average after a bounce off the 21 uh, day. And COHR, another uh, data center, uh, hardware-related name, uh, sitting on the eight-day exponential moving average, Palantir, uh, we bought this back, uh, pulling back after a nice run up, nice continued run up after earnings. Now SMCI, uh, this has all the hallmarks of a, a, a climax top and reversal. If you look at the O'Neill rules in his book, How to Make Money in Stocks, it almost fits the template perfectly. Down 20% on the day, third exhaustion gap higher. Uh, pulled back to the eight-day exponential moving average. This is something we'll just continue to watch, but uh, playing with this right now is just gambling. That's going to wrap it. As always, I'd like to hear from you. The email is Donna Asset.com. The phone's 855-REAL-WEALTH. That's 855-732-5932. If you're interested in becoming a client, reach out to my partner, Dan Stewart, Dan at Asset.com. Remember, it's not how much you make in the market. It's how much of that you can keep. Right now, we're still uh, in growth mode, but if we break those levels that I indicated, we'll be headed more pro toward protection mode as we've got all stops in place, our downside right now, if all of our stops were hit, less than 5%. So we have a plan in place to preserve these nice gains that we've chalked up over the last three months. And with that, I'll once again wrap up the video for the week ending February 16th. This is Don Vandenborg with Revere Asset Management telling it like it is. Thanks for listening and have a great day. Have a great weekend, a great long weekend as the markets are closed for President's Day. See ya.